You know, the Energy Minister, Greta Montasha, says Eskom should be left to decide whether or not to invest in coal against government's preference of a green energy transition. This is in line with recent statements by the Electricity Minister, Dr. Jose Antura Macorpa, who believes that the lifespan of coal-fired power stations should be extended to avert further load shedding. I haven't had any complaint about availability of coal. I've had a lot of things about tempering with coal. Now, if you temper with coal, say you mix coal with stone somewhere, it is actually a movement process. It's not a question of not availability of coal. Coal is available. But the, the distinction that was made by the Minister of Electricity, as I listened to him, was the question of power station linked coal mines, which used to be an investment of ESCOM and paid mines an amount cost plus cost plus mines, and ESCOM has reduced that, and all he says is that there is an advantage in cost plus mines, because you access those mines and you have control over them, and I would agree with him in that. Professor Mark Swilling is the co-director of the Centre for Sustainability Transitions at the University of Stellenbosch. Professor Swilling, good evening and thank you for your time. You suggested that this may in fact be a bad idea to keep these coal-fired power stations running and would go against government policy. What do you think the consequences would be if we were to go, to go this route? Well, it's not me that's saying it's a bad idea. Um, we have a whole range of government policies, including the Integrated Resource Plan, which envisages the closure of 11 gigawatts of coal-fired power by 2030. That's government policy. And it was underpinned by a lot of uh, modeling, technical analysis, uh, and financial analysis. So when the Minister of Electricity talks about extending the life of these coal-fired power stations and not closing them, all I was doing is pointing out that's really not government policy. Um, the obvious argument from the ministers, they say, is that these plants work, that we shouldn't give them up because these plants work. It's not just them who make that argument. Other people do as well. What do you make of that argument? I mean, is there something in that? If we know the technology works, well, we should well, keep them going? Well, we know, the, we, we know the technology works, but we also know that these uh, machines have been badly abused uh, and, in our, uh, and are in a state of disrepair. And the Minister of Electricity made it very clear that it's not going to be cheap uh, to, to extend the life of these power stations and to fix the ones that need to be fixed and also deal with the corruption in some of them. So he said he was going to go to the, 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 go back to government uh, with a budget proposal for government to fund uh, the extension of these coal-fired power stations. Now, that's all very well, but you have to compare that to the alternative, which is the rapid build-out of renewable energy at a much lower cost, and all the decisions have been made uh, for that to happen, and it's underway. So it's, just, it's not that clear how these two can be reconciled. So if the coal-fired power stations are shut down according to the current date, to the current program, are we building enough renewable and other supplies of energy to replace them? And this, I suppose, gets to the big question. And in the end, it always comes back to Madupi and Kosile who aren't firing, who aren't producing the electricity they're supposed to produce. Yes, I mean, Kosile and Madupi are going to be generating electricity for the next two, maybe even three decades. Uh, so we will be burning coal to generate electricity for many years to come, and nobody, absolutely nobody, is saying switch off uh, the coal-fired power stations tomorrow so that we end up in darkness, like some politicians have claimed. So that's definitely not what is being discussed. What, what has been approved is a large quantity of renewables. Uh, the Energy Action Plan refers to 30 gigawatts of different kinds of, of renewables procured in different ways. And that is a lot of that, – that's a lot of energy. Uh, and all we need is actually 10 of that uh, within the next two years to end load shedding. And that's underway, plus the 7.5 gigawatts more or less that might end up on rooftops. So in two, two to three years' time, which is, which is before you can start fixing uh, – you have successfully fixed the, the coal-fired power stations to extend their lives, we will have actually – enough energy to end load shedding. So why not just follow what we've agreed to do? It's in the Energy Action Plan. There's nothing in the Energy Action Plan that says extend the life of the coal-fired power stations. It says follow the cheapest option. The cheapest option is renewables plus backup. And if we don't do that, 
could there be other consequences? People in Europe won't buy our cars, for example. Well, I mean, as, as, as we all know, uh, the world is extremely concerned about climate change and global warming and the impact that it's going to have. We can see all over the world uh, climate change taking place with devastating consequences for food supplies and people and migration and so on and so forth. And inevitably, governments are responding. So in Europe, for example, there is the introduction of, of border carbon taxes. So if we are producing... Uh, mined products or manufactured products and trying to export them, we're going to get penalized uh, heavily uh, with carbon border taxes. So the best thing we can do to open, to make sure that we remain part of the global community is to decarbonize our economy. It's just straightforward economics. It's got nothing to do with, you know, whether you agree with climate change or not. It's straightforward economics. Professor Mark Swilling, thank you. Co-director of the Center for Sustainability Transitions at the University of Stellenbosch.